Everybody loves a good war bird when it comes to RC planes. And I think anyone that's ever wanted to fly an RC plane before has wanted to own at least one of these, maybe a Trojan. There's a ton of war birds out there and there's a ton by different brands too. But I'm here to tell you that both of these warbirds, this P-51 and this Corsair, are two of the greatest flying and performing warbirds that money can buy. Really cool. Got those flaps down. I'll maintain a little bit of throttle. Can you tell I just spent a little time at Joe Nall? <laughs> the fly version of this is so perfect that I just wouldn't want to mess with anything. There's a woodpecker. Here you're buzzing. Flaps are down off of that dive. Let's get it in over the runway. Nice and low. Land the gear down and pop. <laughs> oh, that's cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, I have flown hundreds of airplanes and a big variety of warbirds, and trust me when I tell you, just based on experience, these things are fantastic. In today's video, we're going to fly both of these with two of the recommended battery sizes, both a 4S2200 and a 4S3200 milliamp battery. It's gonna be a slightly longer video because I really wanna spend some time on both of these to show you why they're so great. They are very beginner friendly because of technology called SAFE, which doesn't let the airplane flip upside down, but also they're pretty fun when you kick SAFE off and really throw some maneuvers at these planes. So we're just gonna focus on fun today, flying these warbirds, so kick back, relax, and enjoy this Warbird focused video where we spend a little more time than usual just flying. Let's put them in the air. Now there's a quick shot of battery placement for you guys so you can see where I've got my 2200 4S battery. And I love this plane. One of the best features are those split flaps. You see when they come down there is almost like, it's almost like six sets of flaps there, but really it's kind of like four. Absolutely love that. We have a great day of no wind today. I'm super grateful for that. Uh, let's hope, hopefully we can make this look nice and smooth and scale. I haven't flown this since the last time it was featured on the channel. This plane will be linked in the description box below, guys. Both of these planes will be. We should need a little right rudder. Look at that tail up. Whoo, that tail came up a little too quick. But we're in the air now, so I'm happy. <laughs> we'll put those retracts up on the next pass. And we're just gonna fly this uh, probably pretty scale today. Landing gear up. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> okay, let's turn safe off. I did that, I had it on just because it's been so long since I've flown it. I wanted to make sure that takeoff was nice and clean. But on the next takeoff, we'll make sure the safe is completely off so you guys can see it both ways. Uh, this is a very great flying Corsair. Traditionally, warbirds are not the best planes to fly. But this one is. <laughs> it's really scale and uh, really predictable. It flies really on rails uh, and that's important. You want it to be able to uh, perform the way you're expecting it to. When you give that radio input, you want the plane to perform the way you're hoping it will. When you give aileron roll, you don't want it to flop around and end up upside down or doing a wild corkscrew. Now those drop tanks on the bottom of the airplane that you're seeing, those fuel tanks, those can easily come on and off. Uh, they're just on a little slide rig. So at the field, if you choose to take those off just because maybe you're taking off of grass today as opposed to asphalt and you need a little more clearance, you can remove those very easily. I will show you that at the end of this flight. Oh, what an awesome plane, Abby. This is one of the better Corsairs I've ever flown. Corsair has poor flying tendencies, usually because of that gull-shaped wing. And uh, that was for storage space on aircraft carriers. So those wings could fold up and they'd fit more planes down underneath the aircraft carrier. But it just led to a little worse performance. Just didn't have the speed and agility that other planes did have. And it translates to the RC world too, but because of technology now, safe technology and AS3X, they fly so much more stable. I believe AS3X could help make a rock fly. <laughs> now let's see if we can get a little more wild with this. 
Let's just go for a snap just so you guys can see what a snap would look like on a Corsair. It's a little wild. We can do that one more time. Going this way too. There you go. You can do some wild stuff on this. It doesn't all have to be completely scale. Let's see if we can do a nice little spin. Pull that throttle. Here we go. And we'll pull out of that before we get too low. Let's do a full flap pass. See if we can get it in nice and slow. Very little throttle here, keeping me in the air. Don't want to stall out of this. What a pretty pass though. Flaps are up, throttle up, keep it moving. <laughs> I love flying the Corsair. So awesome. This is just a great day to get out and fly. Let's see if we can get a nice show pass over the runway. Show off that star of the wing. It'd probably look a little better coming in this way, which I am worse at doing, but we'll try it. Going away at an angle, so not as clean, but still showed off that star really nicely. This is a fun maneuver. Just doing some figure eights into some rolls. Warbirds, you know, you're not gonna come out here and harrier them. <laughs> but you can do fun, aggressive maneuvers. I like to pretend like I'm on sound effects, like my machine gun sound effects. Ch -ch 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 on my strafing runs. <laughs> let's go, let's go flat pass on left to right here and see if we can get it kind of low, right over the runway. It's an amazing airplane, you guys. It really is super fun to fly. A lot of faith in this thing to be able to come in without your landing gear down, nice and slow like that, safe as off, to pull it in right over the runway. Really cool. Got those flaps down. Gotta maintain a little bit of throttle. Can you tell I just spent a little time at Joe Nall? <laughs> All these guys at Joe Nall, if they're not an inch off the ground, they're not flying. <laughs> that was a fun event. Oh my gosh. And so the goal of today's video is to show you guys flight performance on each of these batteries. What you're hearing now is a five minute flight timer and I'm flying on a 2200 milliamp battery. Let's take it up. We're gonna roll it and bring it around. See if we can pull off a decent looking Cuban 8 with this. Let's go this way. Should have dropped that lower on the back side, but that's okay. There we go, that's a little better. I'm holding that inverted when I come out of the back side of the loop. That's important for a good looking Cuban 8. Still not the best though. Let's go full throttle over the runway. I don't know if you guys know this, but when you're flying electric planes with a ton of power like this one, you really don't need to crank it full throttle. And all this flight so far, I haven't even touched full throttle except for this pass. And that first, that last pass that just went by. So let's bring it in one more time where I'm quiet. You can hear the plane. thinking it's time for a landing so let's drop the landing gear I thought I heard a pulsing motor so very interesting that I would have had my telemetry we'll see what the uh, make sure landing gear yeah, landing gears down I've pulled it down get a little closer to us oh yeah I was got that little hop that got that little hop going but that's okay it's still smooth landing 
It's smooth other than that little and hop at the wheel? end, which I had very little control over, but they, the wheels touched down nicely. Let's see where the telemetry tells us the voltage is at. 14.5 volts is what it's saying. So I think we could have kept flying a little longer, but that's a great flight on the Corsair for a 2200 milliamp battery. Let's put the P51 in the air. Now here is my favorite P51 to fly. I love, love everything about this, mainly because of how well it does in the air and on the ground. P51s are traditionally very hard airplanes to take off and land just because there's so much nose on this airplane. Uh, but it's always been one of my favorite, if not my absolute favorite Warbird. And uh, I'm hoping you guys can see why with that beautiful takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> that tail lifted up and we kept the wheels rolling. So we're off to a good start. And hopefully I don't jinx myself and uh, have bad landing. But so far, everyone I've had on this plane has been really great. So should be able to repeat that today. Let's put the landing gear up. Oh yeah. It's just a perfect P-51. It really is. Let's roll it over and bring it back down and around. A lot of amazing day to fly. I'm so glad we got to get out here and fly today and share this experience with you guys. Now, as I said with the Corsair, both of these planes will be linked in the description box below. You use those links, it helps to support our channel and our family at no extra cost to you. It's an amazing system set in place where you guys are getting to watch free content. Uh, and if you're gonna buy something, you might as well just click the link and buy it through us. We love bringing this kind of content to you guys. And uh, when you do that, it helps keep that ball rolling. So we're grateful. I think the P-51 flies better than the Corsair. As it should. We're gonna take it up. We'll snap it just for the fun of it. It's not a wild airplane. This is one that every time I fly, I'm constantly reminded, let's keep it scale, Nathan. <laughs> because there's no sense in doing anything crazy on this thing. It is the perfect example of what a P-51 can do and should do. There's nothing wild that you're gonna get out of the radio on this. And this is the bind and fly version that I'm flying. Now they usually sell plug and play versions where you can put in your own receiver and everything. But the bind and fly version of this is so perfect that I just wouldn't want to mess with anything. That's a woodpecker. That's cool. Honestly, thought that was your transmitter, and I was yeah. like, "What is wrong with your transmitter?" That would be bad. Let's take it in for a flat pass. So I kick safe off after the takeoff. Um, when you fly a lot of different things, like I do, I like having safe because it just gives me a little bit of a comfort buffer in between airplanes. Mm, man, that's awesome! What a cool plane. We'll do it again coming in this way. I've got a little bit of a breeze. It's really a cross breeze today, but it's not bad. It's a few miles an hour. Try to pick up the speed a little bit before you kick those flaps off. I think if you turn flaps off and you're going that slow, you might be asking for a disaster. <laughs> Let's go in full throttle over the runway. There's full throttle. Bring it a little lower this way. This is my more comfortable direction usually. A little bit of a show pass at a funny angle. Here we go. Bring it in again. And we'll climb an abbey. Sorry. That's okay. There's like 20 birds in the sky. It's pretty wild. It's <laughs> I don't know what's off. going on. Probably thinking it's Plus, uh, I just heard a radio, so. Yeah, we wanted to make sure it's not a plane. It's a very big commercial airliner way up there. Pull up on that elevator. Sometimes that hill throws me off, and I think we're going to come in and smack the ground, but I've got a buffer zone. <laughs> Here we go. Nice loop. into a roll a little bit of up elevator to hold it if you don't give any up elevator uh, when you're upside down you do lose a little bit of altitude so check this out N nose up just aileron it comes down a little bit 
But if you go into it with like a 15 degree climb, maybe 25 degree or so, you'll be fine coming out of it. But if you want it to look level both sides, you gotta go up elevator as you're upside down and then you shouldn't lose any altitude. But if it's just roll, you'll lose a tiny bit. So check this out one more time. I'm gonna nose up a few degrees, just aileron, and it comes out of it pretty level if you nose up a touch going into that. Let's crank it. Cranking it, cranking it. These are such cool airplanes, Abby. <laughs> they are two of the best flying warbirds we have. They fly big. They fly really big. Let's go up. Yeah, let's do an inverted pass here. Can't remember how much I gotta hold. Good bit, gotta hold a good bit of elevator in that. We'll roll out of it. See if I can get that in a little lower over the runway on this pass. Again, that's only a five minute timer there. Should be able to climb out of this with an outside loop. Yeah, there we go. We'll hit those flaps off of this dive. And let's climb it up and do that again. Joe Null inspired you to fly low, huh? Sure did. I can tell. Uh-huh. All I need is smoke. <laughs> 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 Abby knows if I'm flying different. Someone's oh, yeah. talked me into flying a little. Yeah. Know, that's all they did. They You're just uh, take their big pretty planes over the runway. You, go, you watch other people and you get ground. inspired to try different things. It's awesome. Look at that. My go oh my gosh. What, what do you think of that? That was cool, that was right? Terrifying a little bit hey, for me. That was fun. Didn't really intend to land, but that was a cool way to land. <laughs> oh, I like that. Did you film it okay? Yeah, I filmed that's it. Cool. Should we do it again? Try again? <laughs> Whatever you want. Let's try again. Let's go. That oh, was fun. Oh, you're going around. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Well, you're taking off that way? Oh, yeah, because of the wind. Mm -hmm. And that was a little sloppy. I'm sorry. It was That's sloppy. Right. You almost Landing broke your prop. Up. Flaps are up. So, this was really fun to do. What I did was climb up. There's my telemetry. There it is. Below. Anyway, here you're buzzing. Flaps are down off of that dive. Let's get it in over the runway. Nice and low. Landing the gear down and pop. <laughs> oh, that's cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was like my most fun P-51 landing ever. Now guys, <laughs> I actually planned on putting in those 3200 milliamp batteries in this video too, but I wanna show you a couple things about these airplanes really quickly and the radio that I'm flying on. And we might save those 3200s for another day because this flight time was significantly longer than I thought it would be. So on my radio, my NX6, which will be linked in the description box below, this is like the cheapest version of the newest, best spectrum radio that's out there. And it flies these planes just fine. You can get the NX8, the NX10, they actually, I think they have 20 out now. Uh, but this will do these planes with the flaps and the retracts. You don't really need the eight unless you need just an extra channel. But this radio paired with these bind and fly planes gives you telemetry and other things right out of the box. So when I landed that P51, I knew my cells, my voltage on the battery was at 3.56 volts per cell. That's not horribly low, but it's definitely low enough to land. And I love uh, what Spectrum has to offer. There's other brands of things you can fly on, certainly things that are cheaper, but if you want the best of the best, this is, usually where you go. And I pair them with the smart batteries as well. That's what I was flying on today. Those will be linked in the description box below. Now, the last time I flew both of these, I think was in cold weather. So I really wasn't expecting that flight time on a 2200 milliamp battery and flying aggressively like I was. These planes are awesome. That was a great flight today out of both of them. But I think you can probably see my confidence level in the P-51 is just a little bit higher, especially the way I was dive landing, which is super fun. I've never done that before, where I dive full flaps, pull well, maybe a foot or two off the runway, and as I'm coming in, skimming the ground, drop those landing gear and touch it down. That was such a fun, pretty landing, and I gotta give myself a little pat on the back because that was really cool, I love that. Uh, let's take a closer look at these airplanes really fast before I let you guys go. So the Corsair, for example, I told you guys about these fuel tanks, these drop tanks. They are on a sliding rail system. They just slide on and off. I think it'd be really cool if 
E-Flight offered a little servo there that you could use <laughs> on your seventh channel to drop these mid-flight. It would cost a little bit more, but man, I'd love that a lot. You can do that on both of these. They really just slide on or off. And that's a great locking system because when it's in the air and air is pushing on those, they're not going anywhere. You'd have to fly your plane backwards for those to fly off any chance at all. The P-51 is exactly the same. These just slide on and off. And a lot of companies are adopting this system now because it is so great. You don't have to fly with those on. It just adds a little bit more scale realism and a little more fun while you're flying. As to which plane you might consider picking up for yourself, it's really up to you. Personally, I like flying this P-51 a little bit better. I think it's just a little, a little more fun, but they're both great. So if you just like the way that Corsair looks more, go ahead and grab this plane because it flies amazing too. I've just never flown such a good responsive P-51. I started, I think, on the Tower Hobbies P-51 that was a little smaller than this. It had retracts, optional retracts. And uh, I think it was like a hundred bucks back in the day. Sure, planes are a bit more expensive now, but I used to prop strike that thing and have rough landings and tail up landings all the time. This, and I, did, I should have jinxed myself when I did that takeoff and said all my landings are pretty on this. They just are. I mean, it's like magic and that was safe off and just, it, it's like the wheels glue to the ground and uh, <laughs> it's a great flying and landing airplane. Both of these are linked in the description box below and I'm super grateful for today. You guys let me know what you think about slightly longer format videos. Did you like hanging out with us? Would you have enjoyed in the same video to see me also fly on 3200 milliamp batteries making this video like an hour long? Just let me know and maybe we'll make it happen. I couldn't have asked for a better day to fly and to get out here with my wife. Uh, and for that, I thank God. I'm so grateful, you guys. Also, I wanna say a massive thanks to our Patreon supporters because we couldn't do what we do as often as we do it uh, without your amazing support, and I thank you. Now, if you're into Warbirds, the beautiful news is we've got a ton of Warbird videos on our channel, but we will hand select one of our favorites, and that's popping up right about now. Thanks for watching, we'll see you there. Bye.